welcome to another episode of All About That Base, the series where I show you how to make some awesome bases for your miniatures. And today we're going to be making a beach scene base. Now, I will let you know ahead of time that this is one of my bases that takes quite a bit of time. Um, each step is relatively quick, but there are lots and lots of little steps, uh, mainly because this uses water texture um, and we've got to add that a little bit at a time, let it dry and then add another layer. But hopefully you'll agree that the results are worth the time and effort. So let's head to the table and I'll see you in a bit. So the first step in this one is just to raise up one side of the base slightly so that we get that nice effect of the, the sand getting higher and the water kind of getting lower. And for that I'm using this very thin roll of cork. So I'm just going to take a few pieces like this. And this is just going to help give us that height difference um, without having to use too much of the pumice. Because the pumice isn't the cheapest thing in the world and it also, if you make it, put it on too thickly, it takes forever to dry. So I'm just going to cover just less than half with super glue and then I'm going to glue one piece down here and then put the other one here overhanging slightly and then we're going to take our third smaller piece and we're going to stick that on top of that one. You can see that as I've done in some of my other videos where I've used cork, I'm gluing it all down with overhang and then I will trim the excess off. I just find that you get better results if you do it that way. So I'm going to turn over and just start running your nails around the edges and pulling the excess cork off. And start from the other side. You don't have to be too neat with this because we're going to be uh, covering over it. So there we go. We've got this nice stepped effect here. So then we're going to slope this using my trusty Vallejo white pumice. So I'm going to take my applicator. I forgot to clean it after the last time I used it. There we go. It's a bit better. And we're just going to start slapping this on quite thickly. So that everything gets covered. So you're kind of turning that step effect into a nice, smooth gradient. And it can take a little bit of practice to get this right, but don't be afraid to 
take some of it back off if you think you've put it on wrong or you know just keep persevering with it and then once you feel like you've got the gradient right you can take a battered old paintbrush and cover up the cork around the back just brushing it on to fill in all the gaps So I will finish off doing that and get it neatened off and prime it and then I will be back to show you the next step. So what I've done with this one is I have primed it in Zandri dust and then I've just sculpted a couple of kind of cartoony style shells out of some air drying clay and I've painted those and just glued them on. I am going to be doing a video uh, shortly about different types of air drying clay and what you can use them for and how to sculpt them and things like that. So keep your eyes open for that one. Um, but next what we want to do is add the sand. <clears throat> now we are going to be using real um, just kind of play sand I suppose this is because we want the sand to look realistic. But the reason that I've primed this in Zandria just first is that so none of the white uh, from the pumice comes through if there's any gaps from sticking the sand on. I made that mistake in the first one I made. So all we're going to do is liberally apply PVA glue to the base in blobs all over. And then we're just going to use a battered old brush to spread it around in quite a thick layer. And you want to get some of this onto your shells as well, because uh, we do want some of the sand to stick to them. Uh, so you don't have to be careful and neat going around those. And we're also going to be adding um, two layers of sand. So we're going to let this one dry and then put a bit more PVA on and add some more just to make it quite a, a thick and substantial layer. And we're going to spread the glue around the back as well. Just so that everything that you've got the Zandri dust on also gets some PVA glue on it. And then it's up to you how you apply the PVA. Some people like to, uh, sorry, uh, how to apply the sand. Some people like to fill a tub with it and kind of dip it in. I prefer the sprinkle method. So we're just going to liberally sprinkle sand all over. And you can see that this kind of gives the effect that the shells are actually buried in the sand. And then we'll just pick it up. Some of the excess will come off when you do this. And then we're just going to leave that to dry for a... I'd give it about an hour or so. Um, and then we will come back and move on to the next layer. Next year. So I left this to dry overnight and didn't touch it. And as you can see, there's very little coming off because that's because I put quite a thick layer of PVA glue on the sand all soaked in. So it's giving you quite a nice solid coating there. So the next step is to pretty much do the same again, but with a little bit less glue. So we're just going to spread this around. Oh, 
all over. Again, get it on the shells. It doesn't matter if they get sand on them. Spread that all around. And then we go back in with the sand. Again, we're just sprinkling this on all over. And then leave that to dry for a few hours and we will come back and start adding the water texture. Now that the second layer of sand has dried, we can do our Taylor Swift. And again, you can see that not much is actually coming off because the, the glue kind of soaked it all up, if you like. So, get rid of that. And now it's time to start adding some water. <clears throat> so, for that, you're going to need your plastic palette, a pipette, some... Vallejo still water texture and I'm using some P3 turquoise ink. Now you can use any greeny bluey ink that you've got. Um, I know that uh, Green Stuff World do some great inks uh, but for water this is my preference. So we're going to fill up a well on here and then add just two drops of this probably get away with just one but for this particular base I prefer to to add a bit more color and then take your toothpick and give this a good mix together And then once you've got that nicely mixed, it's just a case of starting to apply it. And we're going to be doing this in <clears throat> stages. So you can see here that we've got this, this raised bit here. So to begin with, we're mainly just going to be focusing the water down here and then eventually going up here. But you'll, you'll see what I mean when I start. So I'm going to load up my pipette and just start dropping it on letting it go onto the shelves and just being extra careful when you get to the edge you're just adding it a drop at a time if you go too quickly with this as i've said before it will all just spill over the side of the base and it won't be very nice so then what we can do is just start applying very small thin layer up here as well kind of letting that drip down but you don't want to do too much because it will flood the bottom part of the base so just tiny little bits to get start getting that color there i'm pushing it there so i'm going to stop for now as I said at the beginning, it's a very gradual process. And the reason for that is you just you don't want to make a mess. So pop in all my bubbles. Maybe move a little bit down there so it's got a bit of colour everywhere. There we go. Bring a bit of that up. Okay, so that needs to dry for at least 12 hours, so I'm going to leave this overnight and then I will come back tomorrow and we will apply the next layer. As you can see, what's happened when this has dried is that it's cracked 
Now, don't worry if that happens. In my experience, whenever I've put water texture over sand, the first layer has cracked like this. But it's completely dry, so we can start adding our second layer now. So what I've done is mixed up another batch of the water texture, but this time I've only put one drop of the ink in it. So I'm going to suck this up and repeat what we did before. And as you can see, as soon as I put this on, it's filling those cracks. So we'll go along the top and let that flow down. Don't worry too much at this point about getting too close to the edge because once this layer has dried, we're actually going to go over that with um, some more water texture but with a paintbrush just to bring the water effect further down and you can go a little bit further onto the onto the beach if you like just to give it that wet look there we go and again leave that to dry for 24 hours and then we'll come back and touch it up now that's dry what we're going to do is take some more of our water texture and ink mixture and an old paintbrush and what we're going to do here is just neaten up these edges and make sure that they have the water texture on as well and you may have to do several coats of this just to get it looking right So I'm going to go and touch this up and then I will come back and we'll start working on the waves. First of all, I apologise for the lighting in this section. I can't quite get it right, <clears throat> but hopefully you'll still be able to see. So the next step, the penultimate step, is to add some wave textures. And for that, we're going to go back to the Vallejo Texture Gel. And we're just going to get a little bit on a paintbrush and start just dabbing it on you kind of have to do this in small amounts pulling it up around where it would be hitting the shell As you put it on, you kind of do a little flick motion to pull it away, and that's what kind of forms the peaks of the waves. And just some little ones along the shawl. So then we leave that to dry and then we will come back for the final detail. So here it is with the wave texture now dried. Um, I did actually let this dry and then add another layer of the water gel just to make these waves stand out a little bit more. So now onto the final step, and that's just to add the white to the waves. And to do that, we're going to use some still water and I've mixed in some white pigment powder. Now you could do this with white ink or even just a drop of white paint. Um, I just, uh, I find the pigment powder preferable, but I know not everybody has that, so... And then all we're going to do is take a little bit on the brush and just put this onto 
everywhere that we have created waves. Trying to get it mainly on the waves itself rather than in the recesses. It's not massively easy. But just bear with it. If it does pull into the waves between, at uh, the gaps between the waves, just dry your brush off and try and wipe it up. And then we're just going to dab some onto the shoreline. Just to give the illusion of that kind of frothy look that you get when the uh, waves hit the beach. And there we go. All that's left really to do is uh, paint the rim. If you want to, you can leave this dry, see what it looks like, and then put another layer of the white water onto the, the wave peaks. But that's completely up to you. It's personal taste. So that's my beach base. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and that way you'll be notified whenever I release new content. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram and I've put the links to those down in the description. And if you've got any feedback or comments, please leave it in the comments section and I will get back to you. I will be back on Wednesday with another video and until then, happy hobbying.